People tell us every week that our information has helped save their life. If you agree that this is helpful information, please like, share, and most of all, subscribe. Because nothing makes a channel like subscriptions. Autophagy. Now let's stop and just talk a little bit about what that is. You know, most people who watch the internet, especially who watch science technically leaning shows in biomedical stuff like ours, know what autophagy is. But in case you don't, you know, just break the word down. Auto means self. Phage means to eat. And this is not talking about people eating themselves. This is talking about, it's talking about the cell eating itself. It's just like recycling on a cellular level. So what happens if you're not giving your cells a whole bunch of external sources of calories, the cells in your body have to have something to burn. So they start taking parts of the cell to burn. And that's not a bad thing. In fact, that's been found to be very, very helpful for health. There's actually some drugs, maybe gray market at this point, things like rapamycin, where people say, you know what, can I take rapamycin back and forth? It used to be black market for it, but even when it was, it was still was used on stents it was used on along with some cancer drugs and it actually stimulates autophagy as well. In fact, we'll talk about mTOR a little bit later in this show. Let me get back to the script. Autophagy is a cellular catabolic, meaning the metabolism where you're using your cells. You're using stores of energy to live on rather than external energy. It's a catabolic process responsible for the destruction of long-lived proteins and organelles. What are organelles? Well, organelles, you know, in the body you have organs like the heart, the lungs, the stomach. In the cell, you have little subcomponents as well, like the nucleus where you keep the, the DNA, Golgi apparatus where you build the proteins that the cell needs to carry out its life, and mitochondria, which just about everybody that thinks about age has heard of. So you get these organelles, mitochondria especially, get sort of burned out just like a, a furnace of the cell. It creates energy. And these things get beat up a little bit as they continue to go through that highly oxidative process. One of the best things for our health, our body, this has been discovered over the past 20 years, is for us to clean out those old beat up mitochondria and other organelles and let them be replaced by healthier, newer ones. Now, back to the script here, doing this activity, that destruction of aging organelles via lysosome-dependent pathway. If you look on the side there, one of the things that we're starting to show, and I did this a couple of years ago, there was a great New England Journal article with some great graphics showing what a lysosome is. It's an organelle within the cell, and it contains enzymes, and those enzymes digest protein. So you want to get some uh, lysosomal activity and again, as long as you're just stuffing your face and gaining weight and not going on any kind of fasting mode, it's going to be hard to get that kind of activity. If you've heard that once, you'll hear it multiple times during this discussion. It occurs on basal conditions. It mediates homeostatic functions. I'm not going to stop to explain what that means. It plays a critical role in vascular disease such as atherosclerosis. Blocking mTOR has shown an additional benefit. So mTOR is, it stands for mammalian target of rapamycin. Remember, I mentioned rapamycin when we started this discussion. And rapamycin comes from the island of Rapa Nui, one of the Easter Islands. I did a, a series of videos on this. You may remember a fellow named David Sabatini. He won some science awards for him discovering mTOR and the impact. So what happens is rapamycin is a chemical that was developed out of some, I think, mold or fungus that was found on that island. And what they found was using that, you actually got a chemical stimulus of autophagy and it was brokered through mTOR. So I won't go too much deeper into that. Let's go to our next article. It's in Cell Metabolism back in 2011 from some U.S. authors. Autophagy regulates the cholesterol efflux from foam cells. Now, what is that? So foam cells are aging cells that have been very active. There are macrocytes, some of the immune cells. And what's going on with those things is that they're going into an area where they're finding a lot of cholesterol in a place that it shouldn't be. People want to just argue about that cholesterol is always good. I'm not going to argue that. Uh, we'll get into actually some of the discussion about 
whether LDL, HDL, even HDL, NLP little a, or the arson, the firemen, or maybe neither one, maybe just gawking bystanders who are interested in seeing what happened. In other words, bioindicators. So anyhow, back to this article, lipid droplets are the major site of cholesterol storage in a macrophage foam cell. So that's the cell, the immune cell, the macrophage that has come in, seen areas or pools of cholesterol that are in the wrong place, forming plaque. It gobbles that cholesterol up to take it somewhere else. Cholesterol eth esters are liberated from these cells and delivered to cholesterol acceptors. The lysosomes break the cholesterol-loaded macrophages. In other words, you remember these pockets with enzymes in them? They help break up these macrophages and start digesting this whole soup. It gets enhanced by autophagy, leading to reverse cho cholesterol transport. In other words, the other topic, it's not a big word, but you may not understand the concept of reverse cholesterol transport. When you talk about cholesterol transport, you're talking usually about it going from central organs like the liver out to cells, where it may be used for things like creating a, a cell wall structure. Reverse cholesterol transport is taking cholesterol from the body outside of the central area, so outside of the liver, and bringing it back to the liver. So what this is talking about, lysosomes helping break up. So first of all, macrocytes coming in, finding all of these plaques out in the artery walls of your heart, which is the important place, but you find them in your groin, the femoral arteries to your leg. So these macrophages find this, these immune cells do. They start gobbling it up. Then lysosomes start breaking these things down. And then they start reversing the transportation to send this back to the liver. So now you're beginning to get a little bit more of a microscopic metabolic level picture of what's going on in terms of autophagy and management of plaque. So here's another article, more recent, Journal of Inflammation, 2019. The authors were in Iran. Atherosclerosis derives from chronic inflammation. I'm not going to go down that bunny hole. If you've not heard of that, then you haven't seen much on this channel because we talk about that all the time. Cardiovascular inflammation. 